so the the title is revisiting uh, quartz H and quartz C and D, uh, but maybe it should have been revisiting monadic quartz H and quartz C and D, or even revisiting the way we run shell commands. Uh, so currently we have quartz H and quartz C and D as a method to run uh, shell commands, and they're pretty old and they might just work fine for the the purposes you use them for. Uh, so we had we don't have any plans of changing those or removing those, uh, but they still have some issues or stuff they could do better. Um, so we we are looking at exploring what could be done better and then perhaps introducing a new system function uh, to sort of solve those problems. Uh, and if all goes well, we're aiming for version twenty. <coughs> so. Um, Quadisage is used to run a, an external program or a shell command. Uh, stuff that's difficult or impossible to do in the APL, so mount a network drive, uh, run some test scripts and get status and so on. And there are mainly two outcomes from running a, an external program, uh, the side effects of it, and also the output produced collected as text. Um, so I just have an example. There is a command on the Unix systems called grep that allows you to search for a piece of text in, in a bunch of files. So this will search for the word example in all the files that end in .c. Um, and the output of this is, yeah, two files have the word example. Um, so just looking at this, it looks like QuadSH returns a character matrix. But really, it doesn't return a character matrix. This output is just printed to the session directly. Um, and that's fine for interactive use. Uh, if the grep command has been, had been slow, each line would have appeared sort of when it was ready. Um, but it's also a little bit deceiving because when I try to assign the result of QuadSH, the same command, and look at the shape, it's a vector. Uh, yeah, so that the different modes of operation if the result is assigned or if it's just used interactively. So it's a nested uh, array where each element is one of the lines from the output, so I can mix it and get the same thing. Um, so if I just try to look for another word that probably isn't in my example data, uh, I get no output in the first case. But in the second case, I get a domain error because when I assign the result, the exit code of the program that's run is checked. Uh, and by convention, ex return code zero is success. But grep returns an exit code of one if it didn't find anything. So, yeah. I mean, it could be nice if, if you would get an, a zero element nested array for the zero results, but uh, that's not the way it currently works. Uh, yeah. So here's another example. Uh, the cat command just takes a bunch of files and then prints the output. And in my example, we get a domain error again because the return code is not zero. So there's no real, not really any way to know what went wrong in this case. You just get the domain error. Uh, so I can tell you what went wrong. We had the file one and it was printed standard output uh, of course, that standard output is lost because we just get a domain error. Uh, file two didn't exist, and that's why we got the the non-zero return code. And also, cat would have printed a an error message, but that's also not anywhere to be found. Uh, yeah, would have been nice if we could look at the error message. Um, so there are a bunch of limitations or stuff that could have been done better, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of them. Um, so yeah, what happens to the error output? Is it possible to control the input uh, to programs? And then what about those commands that takes a while to run? And uh, yeah, the output, as we saw, the cat command would have printed some output, but it's completely lost if we just get an error. And then what if the output isn't text at all? Uh, currently, QuadSH just assume that output is text. And what about environment variables and so on? So um, yeah, right now we only collect standard output, but it would be very nice if we could also collect standard error. 
uh, and even sometimes programs put output out uh, on the standard error stream even though it's not error messages. Um, so in a normal shell in the terminal window, both of these things just go to the window. It's sort of interleaved. It's hard to tell them apart. Um, but there are normally ways to separate those if needed. So if, if we are able to pick both up, we should also have a way to separate them. Um, yeah. So <coughs> some programs expect to be able to read data from standard input. Usually when running interactively in a terminal window, it's just the lines of text that's typed by the user. But also Unix tools often work in the way that they take data on standard input and produce some on standard output. And that's what makes pipelines so easy to write. Um, and it would be very nice if we could specify the input from the APL side, the standard input. And of course, other times we don't need any input at all. So yes, slow commands, stuff that takes a little more than instant to run. Um, currently, Quadisage can be s somewhat hard to stop once it's running. Uh, it's pretty much impossible to interrupt it from right which can be annoying. So if you start something that takes a while, it's just you need to figure out a way on your own to kill that command. Uh, and also, if we could interrupt it, what would happen to the program? Should it just keep running or should we send it a signal? Uh, there's a lot of stuff there. Um, and also, I would just have assumed that if you just run the quad sh in a different APL thread, then I can continue doing stuff. But that's not how it currently works. Uh, would be nice if it worked that way, then I could sort of forget that, forget about the, the slow slowness uh, and do other things while it runs. Uh, and also we could just, if we decide to kill it, we could just kill that APL thread. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so what about the output we got before we got the non-zero exit code? Uh, so getting that domain error is probably fine in most cases as it allows the user to just write code uh, without having to check the exit code all the time they run quad sh. But there are, as, as we saw before, some programs return a non-zero exit code even though they technically didn't fail. The, the grep command didn't fail, it just didn't find anything. Uh, and there are probably flags you can give to the grep command to tell it to return zero in that case, but yeah. Um, we would want to still have the output even though we got a non-zero exit code, I think. So what if the output isn't text at all? We're so used to working with text when we're working in the shell. Um, but really, we saw the cat command before. If I cat a PNG file, the text, the output wouldn't be text. It would just be PNG, PNG data. And uh, so letting the user choose uh, to interpret the, the input, the output from the command as a different um, type might be useful. Similarly, when we read data from a file, we also don't, don't just assume that it's text. We also allow the user to specify the type. Um, and of course, this is also true for input to the program. It might not be text. And lastly, what about environment variables? Um, so I see environment variables as one of the three major ways of passing information to a child program, uh, standard input and program arguments being two other ways. Um, so it'd be nice if we had a method to specify these. Um, interpreter itself already has a set of variables. So we need to be able to say if we want to extend on that set or start from a new one, start from a clear set. And then of course, each invocation of quad shell should uh, be able to set its own environment variables in the child program. Um, yeah, so now we get to the design <laughs> of the new system function. And uh, until now, it's just called Quad Shell, but that might change. So it returns a three element array, a nested array, where the exit is the exit code of the program, so an integer. And then the IDs and the contents are the set of the streams that we collect uh, text from, the collect the data from. Um, so if you wanted to take you need to specify which streams to collect from, but um, if you want, 
from the contents and the IDs to pick out the contents from standard output, you would use IDs to figure out the index into the contents array. And the command itself is, um, can be specified in two ways. So like in SH, it can be a character vector and that will be evaluated using the system shell. And that's fine, it's easy to use, uh, shell features such as pipelines and so on. But it also has one annoyance and that is um, arguments to programs sometimes need to be quoted. So if you want to remove a file that has a space in it, you need to put quotes around that uh, according to the shell quoting rules. Uh, so it might be nice to be able to specify it as a nested character vector, then you can just have the first character vector be rm and then the next be the file name. And you don't need to worry about how the shell quotes names. Um, so all the stuff we talked about with environment variables and so on, we need a way to control that. And that will be via variant options. Um, so, yeah, so, so I want to be able to just get the return code, but some users might want to be able to have that domain error or non-zero exit still. Uh, and then an option to inherit or clear the environment variables. An option to set the current working directory. Uh, that's often very useful. Uh, yeah, and now let's get that. And by default, we're using cmd.exe on Windows to run the character vector string. And on Unix systems, we were running binsh. But you might want to use PowerShell on Windows or bash on Linux and so on so that you can specify that. And then we have the two options for environment variables and for redirections, which I'll get into next. So um, the environment variables specified as an n by two matrix of environment variables to add, um, or a vector which is treated as just one. And each row is just a name value pair and they just add it in the child process. Uh, they don't pollute the interpreter's um, environment variables. And uh, so we come to the redirections. This is probably the most complex part of it. Um, so it, we specify redirections as an n by three matrix, um, where each row is a single redirection. Uh, so the stream is a number. So I've been talking about standard input, standard output, and standard error but those also have the numbers 0, 1, and 2. And then you specify a mode, so it's either that that redirection comes from somewhere or goes to somewhere, and then X is the target or the source. Um, so we can look at some of the targets. So you can specify that, for example, standard output should go to a target called null, which means it will just be completely discarded. And typically you want the output, but if you want the output, it's going to become an array inside the workspace. So if you just have a command that produces a lot of noise that you don't really need, you can redirect it to null and then uh, don't worry about it. Um, you can redirect the output to a file where tie is a native file tie that's open. You can redirect it to another stream. So you can redirect standard error to standard output just to get that interleaving the, of the two things or you can redirect it to an array, which is the, def the default as uh, quad sh does it. So you get the output as a text uh, array or as an array of a given type, so which will always be a vector. So you can collect this Boolean data by saying, for example, one for standard output to array 11. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, that thing is you can think of collecting as an array as if the output went to a file and then we read that file using quad and get. So the encoding of the content is guessed based on the contents itself. And while I was make, working on the slides this morning, I thought, should it be possible to specify a specific encoding? Uh, I'm not so sure yet, but yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, then we have a couple of redirection sources. So input can come from nowhere at all, which is the default. Um, so no input is attached. Input can come from a file. An input can come from an array. Uh, so if I want to use a character vector as an array, 
uh, as a standard input. I'll just say zero, which is standard input from, and then array x, where x is my character vector. Um, yeah. So Quartier will always set up defaults for the three uh, standard streams. You can specify some of them, and the default the defaults will apply to the rest. And the current set of defaults is that standard input comes from nowhere, so no standard standard input. Standard output is collected as a nested character vector, one for each line. And standard error is just sent to standard input, so it's collected together with that. Um, yeah. So if we look at the exam we had before where we couldn't see what was going on and try to run it with quad shell instead, we get something that looked like this. So the first one is the exit code, so that's a one. That's why we got the domain error before. And then we see that we have only picked up standard output, but we also have the default redirection, so standard error is part of that. And then we have the three lines, some text from file one, and then what looks like an error message. And uh, now we can at least see what's going on. And we can do a redirection from <coughs> standard error to its own array, so it doesn't get mixed with the standard output. And then we would um, you see it as two separate things. Um, and just to show the standard input redirection stuff, a note that I'm not, I'm not suggesting <laughs> this is a good way to do it, but you could have a character vector, hello, dialog23, and then say that you want to redirect standard input from that array, and then run it, and I've just, I'm just picking the result directly, uh, and you would get it in uppercase. So the command tr is just translating lowercase a to z to uppercase a to z. Um, yeah, so to conclude, there are a bunch of things that could be improved about QuadSH, but it's pretty much impossible to extend it without breaking stuff. Um, so the current QuadSH, QuadCMD, isn't going away. Um, and QuadShell allows for much finer control of input and output, uh, among other things, uh, at the cost, of course, as uh, of a more complicated result value. And hopefully this or some variation of this will be part of version 20. <laughs> <laughs>